Welcome everyone to today's video. Excuse the cables, of course I could always put them away, but when I then continue with the P3 as such, it's always five minutes wasting of putting everything back and forth. So I hope you don't mind my engineering desk. The other day we got this Dell XPS 15 for review that we specifically wanted to take a look on regarding this integrated AMD graphics that is integrated in this Intel CPU module. And in the meantime, I read it's actually not on the same die according to other newspapers, it's actually some separate die combined there on one carrier module thing. From my initial impression is that it's rather not as much integrated and rather just a regular PCI module just on one CPU module. Of course, keep it stupid simple integration wise. Honestly, from my engineering perspective, it feels a little bit rushed, like Intel needed some higher performance graphic solution for something and just put it together. As I mentioned earlier, this is probably one reason why this is not a maxed graphic, but this AMD graphic is completely freestanding and doesn't have any outputs attached, like DVI or HDMI or something. And this Prime here, indeed for Linux, yes, I know, not the most impressive demo, but whatever, just works. Can we, by the way, where is exit? As I mentioned in this earlier video, the only thing you need to do is set this DRI Prime environment variable that according to some comments on YouTube, other distributions apparently also have in their context menu, like run with dedicated graphic or so. And it's as simple as this. And when we grab here, this is DRI prime set, we get AMD graphics. And when we do not set this, we get Intel graphics. And indeed, this just works for that part. The only thing that does not just work for me is Vulkan stuff. So this impressive Vulkan demos do not show anything here. Not sure if this is a bug configuration or regression issue. It is however running because the fence will spin up like this. And it's also showing you some data. So it's showing actually 700 frames. So it looks like this is running, but it doesn't help as much if the window is black. And for this Vulkan, however, this DRI Prime is apparently not working. This has no effect here, texture. So right now this is integrated Intel and dedicated silicon die AMD. I do not get any output for this Vulkan samples, which is of course not awesome, but I'm sure if you Google and take a look on this, you probably can get this working with some configuration or patch. I will also next try to compile latest Mesa or so, just to see if that makes a difference. So again, if we set this to zero, we are still getting AMD graphics. What is strange though, just before I started the camera, it was working once when I run this here, Xrunder. So it was not necessary to run this. You also need to be careful, they do not have all the range checking there. I just crashed the X server running this with invalid parameters. Now what is strange is it once worked. I have no idea why, whatever that was about. And if you run this with invalid parameters, the Xbox developers need to do some range checking because this combination here, 0, 1 is handled, but if you set here 1, 1, the X server dies. Obviously not awesome. Maybe another day. Problems are rather want to spend my time on the P3 driver and not on this X render argument checking. But best share, like and subscribe. If we have 100,000 subscribers, we can spend much more time immediately taking a look on such kind of bugs. But right now I also have other things to do. What I wanted to quickly do is show you the performance on Windows with Cinebench. And this is apparently what most people are interested in compare. Because we are of course interested how this graphic performs in general. As reference I have the performance numbers for my Retina MacBook Pro, four years old or something with dedicated NVIDIA graphics. You see here NVIDIA GeForce GT 750M. The reason I use this as reference is because I don't have stock of too many other test machines here. With this older Intel CPU, you see here Intel Core i7 4th Gen 4850 HQ, we get a CPU score that is similar to the AMD Ryzen ThinkPad and a OpenGL score that is higher than the AMD Ryzen ThinkPad, which had here 30 frames per second. And as I mentioned in the AMD ThinkPad video, this is quite respectable for the AMD ThinkPad having 15 watts design power and this four-year-old MacBook or so 
having a much higher design power on the CPU as well as additionally the GPU. So these numbers are actually quite good for that. And now let's start here Cinebench and give this a try. So maybe first CPU and we are running here. As you can see, we are boosting here to 3.45 gigahertz right now. And it actually also shows here both GPUs, oh, logical processors, so. And we got here a score of 737, which is slightly less than yesterday. So, so much to reproducible laptop benchmarks. In a way, it's also interesting how little the Intel performance moved. So in four years from a relatively top of the line, i7-4850 HQ, we do not get that much more today, although this is comparing the Mac version with the Windows version, but I hope that shouldn't matter that much. Now, now we got just a little bit more, but you see the trend and in a way it's also slightly set though. The question is how much this Intel security mitigations in Windows affects this. It could be that without the security issues that Windows is workarounding for sure the performance would be some 10% higher, but this is also Intel's fault that they have the security issues at all. 745, slightly more than a second ago, but yesterday I got 777. And so performance-wise, this is only 200 points more than four years ago. So it's good to see AMD back in the game again. And of course, it would be awesome to see more laptops that are not as thin and light and more performant. And for the OpenGL benchmark, when we run this now, we will get AMD graphics. I have not found a nice setting somewhere in the Windows UI to disable the AMD graphics, but I found disabling the AMD graphics in the device manager worked. So we will also do this and document here what kind of performance change we get for this. And we get 113 frames, which is more than I got yesterday. Hmm. Okay, so much to benchmarking, dynamically scaling laptop silicon, your mileage may vary. And of course, this number is not only higher than the AMD ThinkPad, where we got 33 frames or so with the AMD Vega. And again, that was thermal design power limited of only 15 watts. This one is running away higher 45 watts or so configuration. And to benchmark this with the AMD CPU off, we go to the device manager. Let's see if today we need to reboot for that graphic cards. And if you know if there is a nice switch for this, if we deactivate it, it doesn't work anymore. Yes, thank you very much. So if we did not expect this. So let's see if this works without rebooting. Yesterday that had some hiccup. And again, just from running this yesterday and today, you see what kind of performance changes you get there. CPU was down today, GPU is up today. So your mileage may vary. And in general, like with the AMD ThinkPad, I wish the vendors would in general have performance models. This, of course, with the AMD graphic is a nice performance model. Do we not get some result now? Or uh, no, we crashed it, I guess, with AMD disabled. I said I had to reboot yesterday, right? Especially in the AMD ThinkPad case, it feels a little bit like it was intentionally throttled for marketing reasons. And as I said in the first video, it is a little bit a pity that this all-in-one has this magnetic keyboard because this is too short travel for me. And one viewer also commented that he got the regular XPS 15 due to the keyboard. And of course, giving the complexity, not only is of course dedicated traffic always costing you battery life for using this in open source with Xorg and such, you have the drawback of this hybrid graphic scheduling complexity. So you probably only want to go this dedicated graphic route if you really do either gaming or professional 3D graphic modeling and such. Otherwise, it's probably not worth it. Also, the price is obviously way higher. Most viewers for sure want to go the integrated graphic route. Not only does it save a lot of money, it also saves all this complexity. So for the integrated into graphics, we get some 50 frames, which is of course quite good, given that just some four years ago, this is what NVIDIA graphic got you. Unfortunately, this is also higher than what the AMD ThinkPad delivered, at least in this currently thermal design power limited configuration. So some initial performance numbers for your purchase decisions and orientation. 
what silicon and devices deliver today. The display is of course gorgeous and outstanding as you can see. Of course this backgrounds are always chosen that the colors pop out. Obviously very nice photo to showcase this 4K screen and battery life. It's of course funny we plug out the power and the brightness goes up. So with some 50% brightness it is quite bright. Right now it shows some 3 hours 40. Maybe because we have run some benchmark, not sure how often this updates. Earlier I got some estimate of 5 hours doing some light work and browsing. We can also check how fast this updates with 25% brightness. I personally want to remark however that I find this battery life as well as thin and light overrated. I rather take some millimeters more for more performance on the go. Thin and light helps me little when I want to get work done in an airplane and I always wait for my compilation to finish or such. And obviously all this 10 hours battery life is always with brightness down and maybe sometimes Wi-Fi disabled or some silly things like this and realistically they are often at least 20% lower. So I rather take some 5 hours honest battery life where I can really get something done and usually I need battery life when I travel in transit airplanes and then often 5 hour or so is enough for me if I at least get decent performance. I hope this initial values helped you a little bit. We still have here three hours for some reason, although I have AMD disabled. I think the other day I had this without AMD disabled, but maybe this benchmark runs decreased this quite a bit and this will go up in some minutes. If you buy something with dedicated graphics, then you probably know what you need this for and make a purchase decision based on this. I hope you found this quick numbers and comments helpful. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe and I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come. And just when I switched it off, it increased to 4 hours 50. So there you have it. With some light text editing or so, you probably get over 5 hours. But who is getting dedicated graphic for text editing? So every one of my tech focused viewers will already know that if you put load on this, you will get less out of this. So your mileage may vary.